Good evening, good evening, good evening. You're on the Bible Forum. I'm Warren Sprouse. We're here every Sunday night together to talk about life and God and the things that are happening and how all of these things dovetail together. We've got a lot of things to talk about that are not on the script. Uh, some of it has to do with uh, what's going on right here on my desk to my right, your left, because we are recording three, one, two, three, at least four different ways. Uh, I say that and then I didn't start the, the other one. Uh, where are we here? Is that how it goes? Okay, go live. Go live. We can do this. I'm trying to get a lot of different things going at one time so that we can find out uh, which one is best and how it's going to work. Uh, I'm getting tired of paying money and, and having aggravation on the other side of it. This is not showing me anything that says I'm actually here. <laughs> I can't see anything. I don't know if you can or not. Oh, uh, well. Maybe I'm not supposed to see myself. That's always a possibility. Anyway, life has gone on as always uh, in the last couple of weeks. If you have not signed up to receive our weekly rundown of topics, you need to do that. Send me an email at uh, thebibleform at gmail.com. Send out an email once a week. I've said that now for several weeks, years, uh, and the last two or three weeks I've sent two. <laughs> but that's because of the chaos that's going on in the in the ether net. Uh, we don't send out stuff just to be sending stuff out. Uh, we want you to not have to worry about us throwing all kinds of other things at you. We've got a lot of different things that are happening in the culture that bear on our lives and I, I believe tie in to what's going on in the spiritual realm. Uh, one of them has to do with professional football. <laughs> I don't know if that connects anything or not. But the 17,000 Kansas City Chief fans that filed into Arrowhead Stadium this past Thursday night were prohibited from wearing headdresses or war paint. These are traditional get-ups. I mean, these people go crazy with this stuff. It's really interesting to watch. The Houston Texans remained in the locker room during the national anthem. The fans that were there booed them when they came out. And the requisite booing continued as the two teams walked to the midfield, shook hands, locked arms together, stretching from one end zone to the other during what was supposed to be a moment of silence, but the audience was not silent. At issue here is portraying Native Americans, they're not Indians, Native Americans as aggressively warlike. However, the old adage says to the victor belongs spoils, and it's only been in the last decade or so that things like this have been thrust into the national spotlight, not that they haven't been there, they just haven't been a major issue to talk about. I understand the anger, the angst in the Native American cultures, but we're talking 20 plus generations and more. These Native Americans today are U.S. citizens. They are not isolated people groups. Oh, wait a minute. They are, aren't they? But why? The debate rages. There's no resolution to it. Uh, many of these Native Americans do not want to live apart. They want to integrate into the culture without losing their heritage. Others are happy to accept the financial and social benefits that their heritage brings. Discounts at colleges, preferences in hiring. Think Elizabeth Warren. A woman who was outed is not being qualified since her Native American heritage turned out to be a percentage of her DNA so small as to be inconsequential. You must be no more than four generations removed 
in order to qualify. Today, many Native Americans want to live as any other American, but there are a sizable number who refuse. They won't integrate, they won't adapt, they won't embrace the new, which is the 500-year-old, now dominant culture. And of course, that's their right. However, in terms of embracing the warlike, colorful, independent spirit of their ancestry, they're just upset when other people try to portray it. And that too is understandable. The portrayals are largely deficient, both in terms of the culture and the willingness, the ability to fight for their rights. Were they to benefit from the user rights, things might be different. These football clubs have a lot of money. Building schools, hospitals, cultural centers would go a long way toward helping this entire culture and this debate. But before you start jumping on me because I'm not being sympathetic to the Native American plate, I want you to consider that I am one. I, have, and the, I am descended from a Native American woman. Her name was Clamantha Bellu. She was my maternal great-great-grandmother on my father's side from Union, South Carolina. And according to law, that makes me qualified to receive a multiple, multitude rather, of government aid and benefits. Not one of which have I ever thought to apply for. Nor has any member of my family, extended family, ever applied. Why? Because the American way is that of personal integrity and individual accomplishment, or at least it used to be. President Trump has just been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize by Norwegian Parliament mem member Christian Tybring Gede. And you ask why? Well, President Trump brokered an historic peace agreement between the United Arab Emirates and Israel. No one else was able to do that. Now, his son-in-law is a Jew, and he's been in the forefront of getting this all worked out. But that doesn't really answer the question. The Nobel Peace Prize nomination is for the 2021 prize next year. A prize given out every year to people whom the committee in Sweden determines made the biggest stride toward peace in that particular year. Only four presidents and one vice president have ever received a Nobel Peace Prize. Theodore Roosevelt was one in 1906. Woodrow Wilson in 1920. Jimmy Carter in 2002, Al Gore in 2007, and Barack Obama in 2009. Not a true conservative in the bunch. I know you might say Roosevelt, Teddy was a you know, rough rider and all that. He was a progressive. He was a populist conservative. It's different. A quiz given to students at Vanderbilt University recently asked, what was, was the Constitution designed to perpetuate white supremacy and protect the institution of slavery? When one student answered false, his answer was marked wrong. All of this according to a screenshot of the post-lecture quiz obtained by Young America's Foundation, which reported the survey was posed posed to students enrolled in a political science course. The foundation added the class boasts more than 800 students online and is billed in its syllabus as the largest class that Vanderbilt has ever taught. <clears throat> We're being told if Trump gets his way, Social Security benefits will run out in just three years from now. And we dare not let it happen. Joe Biden will protect us and our Social Security. The truth? 
This report adds up to what are four Pinocchios, long-nosed, lying Pinocchio, according to Washington Post's Glenn Kessler. On its rating scale, no whopper is a bigger lie than one that receives four Pinocchios. The reality here is that Donald Trump certainly suggested he might eliminate the payroll tax. But then he pulled back from that idea and reiterated that any diversion of a payroll tax holiday would come out of general funds. White House spokeswoman Sarah Matthews said the president was referring to making forgiveness of the temporary payroll tax deferral permanent. President Trump wants to fully fund and protect Social Security, as he has stated numerous times. The advertisement implies a reality that simply does not exist. The ad refers to Trump's planned cuts, but Kessler wrote there are no planned cuts. The actuary's letter says it is referring only to a hypothetical plan sketched out by Democrats. The Post pointed out that the Biden campaign ad misrepre misrepresented Goss's letter. The ad asserts that if Trump gets his way, benefits will run out. But actually, the letter says it trans if transfers are made from general funds, no benefits would run out. That, at least at the moment, is what Donald Trump says he would do. We've heard a lot about climate change over the years. And according to Georgia Tech climate scientist Kim Cobb this past week, it's going to get a lot worse. He said what's happening now is just the type of crazy climate scientists anticipated 10 or 20 years ago. In the 2030s, or we're going to be noticeably warmer than the 2020s. University of Michigan environmental dean, environment dean Jonathan Overpeck, a climate scientist, said that in 30 years, because of the climate change already baked into the atmosphere, quote, we're pretty much guaranteed that we'll have double what we have now, end of quote. So we can expect stronger winds, more drought, more heavy downpours and floods, he said. The kind of things we're seeing are no surprise to the scientific community that understands the rules and the laws of physics. A lot of people, he said, want to blame it on 2020, but 2020 didn't do it. We know the behavior that caused climate change. Consider the world's environment like an engine. We have injected more energy into the system because we have trapped more heat into the atmosphere. This according to the World Meteorological Organization Secretary General Petteri Tallis. That means more energy for tropical storms as well as changes in rainfall patterns that bring drought to some places and heavy rainfall to others. Now, that alone does not mean the world is going to end due to global warming. The world will end when its creator says so, and not before. And we already know how. He has told us. And that how, no matter when you read it, is always 1,007 years from now. Whenever now is, for you. No? Can you name one thing the Bible has predicted that did not happen? just as the Bible has said. It didn't happen the way men thought it would, but when the dust settles, it's always there. Looking back, you say, that's exactly what the Bible said. Who knew? The arrangement of nations today, the irrational hatred for Israel, the dominance of nations like Iran, Turkey, China, Russia, Europe, which operates like a nation, and the United States, the antipathy of Israel by the Arab nations, nations most of which were not even known in the days when God predicted all of this about them. 
It's amazing. Have you ever looked around at the world and wondered what sort of generation have we raised? Pew Research Center says the chaotic events of 2020 have unfolded as and large numbers of young people have moved back in with their parents. All this has pushed the percentage of Americans in the 18 to 29 year old bracket that live at home to the highest level ever recorded. Pew defined a young adult as anyone who is in the 18 to 29 year old age bracket. And at this point, there are 26.6 million young people living with their parents. We've never seen the number that high. But Pew suspects that the level may have been higher during the Great Depression in the 1930s. We don't have the numbers for such things. I don't know if you saw this online or on television, but tennis star Novik Djokovic walked back from the net in a tennis match after a point. And apparently the point where he was lost to him, he lost the point. And as he walked back, he just offhandedly hit a ball in the direction of the line judge. And I'm guessing that he didn't like the call she made. The story doesn't say if it was her ruling that cost him the point, but it makes sense that it would be. And the ball went straight to her throat. And in the next picture, we see her buckling and holding her throat, her face growing red. Jakozovic was quick to offer help, solicitations, all of that, and is seen deeply troubled by the event but he was immediately disqualified from the competition. This is the high level at which these tennis matches are maintained. But that's not the end of the story. And it usually never is today. This particular woman woke up the next day to a barrage of hateful tweets and other online abuse. All of this because apparently it was her fault, and she needs to pay. Now, the reality is that the Twitter universe is loaded with truly ignorant, uninformed people. They know a lot of stuff, but they don't know anything much. In this case, they threatened her with death, saying she would soon join her son, a son who was killed in a motorcycle accident 12 years ago. Not to mention hundreds of vile messages on social media. And why? All because Djokovic's default from the U.S. Open. Now, the U.S. Open was reluctant to release her name, but a Serbian tabloid took care of that. That's when the abuse became personal. The tennis world, like the golfing world, has always been a bastion of polite and proper behavior. In the last 30 years or so, that has begun to change, beginning with less than proper deportment and extending to what would be proper attire. And now we have death threats. Over what? A bad call? That's a judgment call, judgment case. But what about the physical attack upon her? Oh, yeah, but he didn't mean to do that. You've never played tennis? You always you flip a ball at somebody. Yeah. Not that specific thing. But he did mean to threaten her, intimidate her, punish her. And that's where we are today. Have you received a phone call from the Election Bureau recently? It goes something like this. Hello, I'm from the Election Bureau, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. Do you live at... Well, the person who sent me the email said that they were quick to tell this person that they had sent in their census information online. The person involved actually had a receipt indicating that they had received it. And that's where the homeowner hung up. 
not before explaining just how uncomfortable she was with the nature of the call. Now, the government is legally entitled to know how many people live at your address. Questions concerning their ability to vote, etc., are illegal. They're not in the document. And they ask a host of other questions. The questions grow every year because they want to know how many washing machines you have. But all the answers to the various questions are given, if they are given, voluntarily, meaning you have no legal responsibility to do so. I bet you didn't know that. If you don't know that, then you are probably less than 60 years of age. Can't tell you the number of people who have told me, oh no, you, you have to answer those questions, it's the law. It's not the law. We're going to come right back. i got a bunch of stuff to talk to you about religion, a little spotlight on religion. Stay tuned.